Thanks for staying with us. It's time to go to the press now and see what made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. Our guest this morning is Professor Camilo Sani uh, Fage, Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kanu. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Uh, good morning and thank you for having me. Okay, we're beginning with um, uh, the business NG, and the business NG leads with uh, a, a story about Dangote refineries fuel pricing sparking controversy as marketers undercut NNPC. We've heard this story. Uh, every time Dangote is, is mentioned, it's some, some kind of story that we do not even understand what is happening. It's as if the marketers are more comfortable buying from outside than buying from Dangote. We still don't know what the story is. But um, this headline is saying Dangote refineries fuel pricing sparks controversy as marketers undercut NNPCL. Yeah, you see, if you now uh, take this story, plus another one somewhere where Dangote is saying that um, he's uh, pricing the, his own product at 999 Naira. And uh, where they are saying is that um, uh, cost of la uh, landing costs with everything is going to be 1,028, I guess. So what they are saying is that it is cheaper for them uh, to import than to buy from Dangwati. So the whole scene now is Nigerians uh, will be worried about uh, this give and take, uh, blaming game. Uh, you know, uh, the, the independent marketers are blaming Dangwati and NNPC for higher pricing. And uh, they say it is cheaper to get it uh, from outside. Dangwati is saying this is what uh, He's, uh, he's selling his own at 9.90. So Nigerians don't know who to believe, uh, uh, you know, between the two sides. And uh, the whole thing boils down that uh, whatever it takes is more than 1,000 uh, plus uh, here in Nigeria. In fact, uh, last week we had uh, another, you know, price hike again by about 30 naira per liter. So I think. Um, we don't know where it will end, and uh, we don't know who to blame. Uh, each side is showing that uh, it is uh, it trying to, uh, you know, sell it at a cheaper rate. But uh, like I said, this is our own worry, that uh, whatever it is, we are paying the price uh, through our nose. I don't understand why Dangote's uh, fuel will be 990 per liter. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you 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 can you, you know some of the challenges that you think are making Dangote to sell as high as that. I, I mean, 990. He's buying in naira. Uh, cost of transportation is not there. Nothing is there. And then he's refining it in Ni Nigeria and selling at 990 naira. It doesn't make any sense to me. Even though he's a businessman, I I don't know. Yeah, you see, ideally, ideally, uh, if, uh, you know, some basic economic rules are to be applied, then the price could have been even lower than 500. But the fact is that uh, we are not told the whole story. Even if they give him a Naira, I think they are calculating everything in dollar value. Okay, the Naira amount that they are going to sell to him, they will calculate it in the dollars, and then they will sell it. Uh, like um, a litre, if they are selling a litre, assuming, uh, at uh, one dollar, so they are going to give him at one, uh, one, uh, 1,700 1, plus Naira. So I think uh, the whole thing boils down to this floating of uh, the Naira. So even if Dangote were to get everything, so long as the government will calculate it, compute it in Naira and get uh, I mean dollar, and now sell it in Naira, we are not going to see you know, anything significant in terms of the price fall. So the only thing is that I lay the issue of this floating of the Naira is also addressed this would be the, the issue of, uh, you know, uh, deregulation or, let's say, subsidy removal. Unless these two things are addressed, we cannot see 
you know, the price to come down. Because, yeah, it is Naira. They give you in Naira, but they calculate the Naira in terms of dollar value. So this is what we are not being told in reality. So that is why there is this blame here and here. Uh, because, like I said, ideally, if you take away the cost of uh, transportation, insurance, and all other things that accompany importation uh, of oil, the landing costs, if you put them together, ideally, if you eliminate all these things, if it were the raw cash of it, that uh, will be expecting Dangote's oil or any locally refined oil to be under 500 uh, naira. But like I said, the whole thing is that even the naira is calculated in dollar value. Yeah, well, the sum of all you have said, the sum of all you've said is uh, that they're not telling us the whole truth. And that is, that is what I'm, I'm, I'm hinging my, my, my understanding on because uh, if people who are buying from outside, they're buying from Nigeria, they go there, they transport it uh, on the sea, go there, refine it, bring it back that, with that transport, and it still lands here for just a little above uh, 1,100 naira, then I don't see why someone who is buying it here, he doesn't need to source for the dollar and is not transporting it uh, long distances and all that, should sell us at 990. But they're not telling us the truth. NNPC is not saying the truth. The federal government is not saying the truth. Dangote himself is not saying the truth. And until we find that truth, maybe it will be difficult for us to, to understand. And it has now made some, so many other things to go up. Um, still on that uh, business NG, egg price hit record high in Nigeria as crate cost 6,000 naira in Lagos. That's the, the cost for, for, for eggs, a crate of eggs now is 6,000 naira. That is by 30. So you can imagine what it is now. Yeah, you see, you see if you do a simple arithmetic, it means uh, a piece of egg is now 200 naira. Mm. And uh, because 30, you know, is uh, 6,000. So when you divide uh, 30, uh, 600 by uh, 30, it is going to be 200 naira. What this shows, is the uh, what the government here has consistently keep on denying that there is a problem in Nigeria. There is a problem of hunger in Nigeria, and the hunger is not uh, due to uh, you know lack of availability of uh, food material. I mean food, but due to uh, unaffordability of uh, the material. Actually, the, when you are calculating hunger in any place or you are assessing it, it's either there is no food, that is one dimension, or that there is food but people cannot afford it. It is beyond their reach. And this is what we are saying. A crate of egg, you know, 600 in Lagos. Now you can imagine in other places far away from Lagos because like here in the north, we rely heavily on, you know, poultry from the Ibadan axis. And why is Lagos between Lagos and Ibadan? It's not that far away. And yet, if they sell it there, so we should expect it to be higher here. And the reason is simple. Um, like uh, two days ago, we had discussion here, and uh, we find out that, uh, you know, chicken feet, or, uh, which used to be, before this uh, issue, uh, which used to be like uh, two years back or so, is, it was here around um, uh, less than 2,000 per bag. And now the cheapest one that you can buy here in this place is 20,000. So how can you imagine something that is about 2,000 now is 20,000 and you expect uh, the people to be able to buy. So that is why here in the north, I think people are seeing egg as a luxury because they cannot afford to buy, you know, a piece for over 200 naira, just a single piece of uh, egg, which used to be, you know, the whole crate here, uh, a year old, a year and a half, it was less than that 200 that you are talking about. But now you buy one single piece of uh, egg at uh, 200. So I think these are some of the things uh, that uh, our leaders should take into consideration. It is not just 
business, you know, you have headline that there is this thing, there is that one. The, the leader should not take it as a news. They, they should take it as an input into their own policies. And they should look at these things and now take a realistic step and uh, see how do they address this issue, but not keep on denying that there is problem and that uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I think uh, we are just buying time. It is a very dangerous trend for the country. Yeah, that means that uh, story here still on Business NG has underreported because they say hunger looms as 33 million Nigerians face deep food crisis by 2025. Uh, 33 million is quite a, a, a number that I'm thinking that is underreported. Uh, possibly it will be higher than that, maybe times two or even times five of that number. In a country of two, over 200 million, uh, a lot of people are finding it difficult to even feed and even to produce the food that they're supposed to feed is a difficult thing. And they're reporting 33 million. I wonder how accurate that is or whether they, what data gave them that. Okay, um, now they, let's move to the Daily Trust. Families of detained minors cry for justice. Uh, the writers here are saying, I thought one of the parents said, I thought my son was dead. Uh, Father and other lawyers challenge bail terms. IGP prosecutor's utterances disappointing, according to ACF. And uh, Governor Yusuf demands detainees return to Kanu. CSOs threaten mass action set up once minors released in 48 hours. Well, we saw them. Some of them were fainting. Uh, the police were saying that that was just an act. They were, they, were, they were not supposed to faint, but we saw how they looked and all that. But this is saying the families of the detained minors are crying for justice. I don't know what kind of justice that will be. Justice is, well, let me hear your thoughts. Yeah, yes, I think we have to look at the situation. Okay, now the charges that are, you know, framed, uh, you know, the, the way they are being charged, I think there is injustice there, even in that one. One, we know the issue of protest is constitutionally guaranteed. Secondly, look at the number, the, the, the victims, or rather the people that are detained. Many of them are, you know, underage. And uh, it is a protest. And the, other, the third dimension that we are talking of justice is that, you know, by our laws, uh, the police can uh, detain a person for 24 hours, um, not more than 24 hours, and then they arrange them to court. And now these are spe have spent already three months in, the, in jail, you know, and it is only after three months that the government now arrange them in court and it, when they were brought before the judge he postponed again and give another one for another three months which is uh, he said is going to be january somewhere uh, in uh, 2025 so i think this is uh, the, if you put everything here you can see the element of uh, injustice there they are minors and that uh, they have been detained for three months and now you are charging a bail of uh, 10 million, which you, you fully know well that none of them can afford that uh, uh, amount. And now you now add uh, to that that you have postponed the thing or you adjourn the case until another three months. And uh, why we say there is injustice there yeah, is that don't look at uh, from where they come or whatever. Look at uh, the call from within Nigeria from the regional laws, from international law, all they are condemning this issue. So that is why you can see the element of injustice there. And the other thing is if you now charge them that they are, uh, you know, it's treasonable offense that they have committed, these are used. And uh, you can't charge them just because they, you say they raise plugs uh, of Russian and uh, Russian plugs. What is happening now? Today, we know the Yoruba nation went, even UK, to demand that they want to get out of Nigeria. And nobody talks to them. They, they are even given a plan to go and come back. And look at uh, what is happening with Biapara. They have their own army. They have their own plan. They, they even declared for how many 
uh, years now uh, that Monday is a public holiday, I, I mean, stay at home, and everything is there. And yet you take these things. And uh, I think if you put everything to the purpose you, was that the government wanted to deliberately use them as a scapegoat so that it will scare other people from having protests against what is happening. That is it. Otherwise, look at the leaders today. Uh, even the president himself is a beneficiary to uh, strike. Remember uh, uh, June 12 crisis, when they even call uh, to the nation into existence that they don't believe in the nation, and nobody charged them for treason. And uh, look at, uh, remember, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, the good luck time when they had uh, another strike and this. So I think Kufai, Nigeria. what the government has to do, you put everything, there is injustice there, actually. Mm. Well, I was talking about injustice because there should be a case before you say justice or injustice. This minors, to a lot of people, some of us, we don't believe they should even be there before we are calling for justice and all that. There were people who organized this, uh, this protest, and these people are known. Because maybe these people have international recognition, people are, uh, they know their rights and all that, they were afraid of capturing them. And like you said, possibly they're using these ones as scapegoats. And they're now saying that once you are seven years, you can be prosecuted, once you are this, and leaving the, the matter, the real matter out of it, which is that you have no right to detain someone more than 24 hours on frivolous charges, if you ask me. Because I don't know whether anybody who holds a flag of another nation in some whatever circumstances can be prosecuted like that. So that's why I was saying what kind of justice are they looking for when there shouldn't even be a case in the first place. Uh, but here we are. In the, on the point, they say northern governors, ACF, others demand minors release. And the rather is that not must wake up. Bala Mohammed charges region, sands differ on arraigned minors. I don't think it's an, a northern issue. I don't know whether you think that is a northern issue as well, but I don't think it's a northern issue. It's a national issue because these children are not children of the north. They are Nigerian children. So I don't know why it, is, it has to be the, the governors of the north only that are calling for this. Uh, well, we've seen a lot of people from the south as well, but we shouldn't make it a regional thing. We should make it a nationwide thing. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a national problem. But uh, if you look at it from the angle of the Northern Governors and ACF, the whole of them are uh, about 90 or more than 90 percent of them are from the north. Mm. They are either from Kano, uh, Kaduna, uh, uh, Jigawa, and this. And so they are taken from the north and they are taken from their own state and to Abuja which is also another problem. So I think um, this is something that, uh, like you said, is a national issue. We have to look at it from that angle, irrespective of where they come from. But the problem is that unless the government you know, takes measure, they are going to polarize uh, the country along north-south because majority of them are from the north. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, politicians have a way of uh, you know uh, creating you know a mountain out of uh, out uh, more or uh, out of more you know they they have a way of creating bigger problems from that but actually to me i think this is a serious uh, national issue mm. in fact it is not only a national it is now an international issue which the government should have to be worried about uh, because already you have uh, human rights uh, over the world, you have UN, you have regional organization having uh, say in it, started talking about it. And, uh, you know, the issue, uh, you know, is uh, in play when uh, CNN broadcast the, the thing, uh, showing them uh, painted. So I think the, the country and our leaders should be worried about uh, the dimension, both the national and the international dimension of the issue because uh, it is also a question of our own credibility uh, and our image abroad. So to me, uh, I think we should look at it beyond, uh, you know, just a regional something. Exactly. It is something. If it happens to the northern children today, it could happen to anybody anywhere. Well, 
Uh, exactly. So uh, let's move to other matters. Uh, federal government projects 44 trillion naira revenue as reps oppose ta uh, tax review. And uh, this uh, tax uh, review has brought a lot of controversies. Some governors are against it. Some elites, especially from the north, are against it. Some experts are against it. And reps also is looking at it critically and asking some uh, critical questions. But um, as a follow-up to that, the president has said that nothing will make him change his mind uh, about this, that the, the, the tax review is a very, very critical thing that Nigeria needs to rake in the amount of money they want and everything has been looked into and all that. So I'd like you to analyze the president's uh, uh, stance on this tax review and what you think about the tax review itself, the new uh, regime that uh, they are thinking about passing the bill in the National Assembly. Yeah, you see, this one we shouldn't see it as uh, the Northerners only opposing it. Uh, I don't want, I don't know, for lack of words, I will say it is, uh, you know, being penny, penny wise and palm foolish. By the time you increase taxes, we have seen all the problems that uh, the company with that. That is number one. Number two, look at this issue of tax review is being pushed down our throat by IMF and World Bank. Look at our neighbor, Ghana. They have just said that they are all reviewed. They bring everything down. They are not calculating of what they are going to get out of it. In fact, when you review it down, all over the world, that is what is happening. When you review it down, you are now creating incentive for uh, you know investors to invest and for you know industries to uh, produce more and you can get more tax from that one by the time the government is calculating a uh, 44 uh, what uh, trillion. trillion or whatever mm -hmm. uh, from that amount the damage they are going to make is going to be over three times about that because already many of our industries are closing now they are moving to uh, heavens where the tax is friendly, like Ghana and others. If you come to the north, like Kano, Kaduna, they, they are known for ta uh, uh, textile materials, but all of them have moved now to Ghana, where it's cheaper for them to produce. And if you now take it even in uh, other countries like uh, America and other things, that is why there are many of their companies are living to places where it is cheaper, to produce. Here we are. We don't see the incentive, I mean, the, the damaging aspect of it. We are just looking at what we are going to get out of that. We calculate if we increase the taxes, we do this and we are going to get so so trillion of naira. But we haven't seen, we are not looking at the incalculable damage that is going to do to our own industries, to our own people and other things, which is far better than this. So that is why I think um, the assembly, which is the right, which has the right, you know, it is a constitutionally uh, organized body that will demand this. So whether the president say there is no going back or uh, whatever, Provided the assembly said they rejected it, there is nothing he can do but to accept it. Because if he now goes ahead uh, against what the assembly decides and pass it, uh, they can take it to him, he can veto it, and if, they, it, if it is returned to them, then they override it. He has no option but to implement what they say. So I think our leaders should be mindful of the fact that they are Nigerian leaders, they are not IMF leaders or World Bank leaders. Secondly, they have to be mindful that they are the democratic leaders, not military, not dictatorship leaders. So if Nigerians say they don't want it, the government should not be, the, you know, taking what uh, these bodies, the, I mean IMF and World Bank, put them, to, uh, push down their throat and they take it and think that uh, to hell with uh, everybody, we have to go ahead. So they have to be flexible. They have to know that they are democratic leaders and they have to do the wishes of Nigeria, Nigerians rather, rather than uh, foreigners. Yeah, well, it seems as if they have gotten away with a lot of things. So this will not be an exception. So uh, the president can say whatever he wants and get away with it. For instance, remember the uh, talk about the fuel. He said you either buy fuel at over 1,000 naira or you buy CNG. 
Uh, those are the, the options he handed down to Nigerians. Nothing about we'll look into making fuel cheaper for everybody. Uh, anyway. Yeah, you see, let, let me cut in. You see, what they may see, now they can push down and do everything, but they forget they are democratic leaders. Nigerians can uh, decided not to vote to them again. And uh, that would be another issue. Or somebody will come and reverse it. So it's better they act as uh, democratic leaders. Mm. Well, it, it brings us to the next story on uh, the uh, Nature News. Uh, maybe we'll take that as a final one. Energy security. Stakeholders hap on CNG electric vehicles. Stakeholders are saying that, but um, I don't know if this, the challenges surrounding these suggestions are surmounted at this point. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, the challenges they are very, very much high to us. Look, look, because some people, I mean, some countries are going, like China, Europe, and others, in they are going to CNG and uh, electric vehicles. We have to also be mindful of our level of development, okay? We also have to be mindful about the long-term effect. Uh, this, what we are doing, uh, already, I think somewhere in, in uh, this Nature News, they, they somewhere they say that um, there is going to be, either in Nature News or one of the newspapers that I read today, that uh, there is going to be oil glut. Uh, in 2025. And one of the reasons is that, uh, you know, China, a major, uh, uh, you know, player in this thing, is now putting emphasis on electric cars and, uh, you know, CNG. Now, we as oil producers, these are some of the things that we have to be mindful of. It is, we have to re read the writing on the board, I mean, against the world that uh, the handwriting on the wall, we have to read it. What this is amounting to is that this very commodity that we are now talking about is something that uh, its market is diminishing. So we can't be thinking about that. And the second dimension is beside that long term, we have to look at our own ability and capacity. We are talking of uh, CNG. Uh, like last week when we spoke about it, uh, maybe CNG will be available in Lagos, Kano, Patapot, and others. What of other places? About 70% of <coughs> Nigeria is a rural area uh, where you don't have these things. So we have to. I'm not saying we shouldn't go to, into that direction, but we shouldn't put all our eggs in one basket and, uh, you know, uh, think that is the only thing. We, we have to plan. Uh, in order to go to where we want to do. Okay. Uh, well, uh, that is uh, where we will wrap it up this morning on the paper review. We'd like to thank you, Professor, for coming on the, on the program and uh, bearing your mind on uh, some of these topical issues. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. Mm. Have a wonderful day, sir. Same to you. Mm. We've been talking to Professor Camilo Sanifage of the Department of Political Science, Bio University, Kanu. We were reviewing the headlines on some of the national dailies. Uh, we're going to take a short break. Now, when we return, controversy over end bad governance, protesters' age, and court drama is our next topic. Stay with us. <laughs>